Everyone's talking about what happened this election. Literally everyone has an amazing opinion. Everyone knows exactly the truth. Everyone's a genius. Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, how many of these people have written full articles about how they would never vote for Donald for Trump. Trump. They're some of his biggest blazers today, right? And when you have those rioters saying that they are doing so in the name of the president of the United States, and when you have them doing that to the legislative branch, they are rioters, they are not protesters. And this was an attempted act of insurrection. Democrats are scared because like we- Yo, that's crazy. Ben Shapiro was like completely anti-Trump after January 6th. Ben Shapiro called January 6th almost worse than 9-11. And then Ben Shapiro realized Donald Trump was going to be the nominee again. So Ben Shapiro completely just became an, the ultimate grifter and became the huge MAGA supporter he is today. What a grifter, bro. Ben Shapiro is so dishonest. We know the stakes. There's nothing for Republicans to be afraid of. Like, what, Biden comes into office? The reality is the last three Democratic presidents that have come in have all cleaned up recessions from Republicans. What, what do they have to be afraid of? True! I'm, I'm actually Very true. In, in, in also, dude, they come in, they don't pay attention to any politics, they vote in someone like Donald Trump and then they don't pay attention to politics again for four years. So they vote in Donald Trump and other people that don't know how government works and they leave liberals and people who are politically involved to deal with Trump. Like liberals and progressives are the reason many of these Trump voters have health care, but they just don't know it. They, they literally just don't know. Um, but yeah, they vote Trump, leave, and then we try to hold society together and then Trump gets credit for it somehow. Somehow Trump gets credit. And Democrats get blamed. Somehow Biden gets blamed. All Democrats get blamed when Trump messes up. It's crazy. Talking about the conversation you guys were just talking about, which is like what, what we do to contend with, with a right-wing media ecosystem that looks the way it does right now. I mean, we, we've like, the, the thing that blows my mind is how we've sat idly by on the left and just allowed the right to create this, this media infrastructure where they have Fox and OAN and Newsmax and tw top, the top 20 podcasts, like nine of them are right-wing podcasts. Megyn Kelly, Dan Bongino, Ben Shapiro, um, Joe Rogan. It's, it's all just like this, this gateway into, into, into just right-wing ideology. They have, they have Facebook, they have TikTok. And all the while, all we do on the left is sit idly by and validate the same mainstream media outlets that are proving over and over that they do not want to be on Democrats' teams. Like, how many times do we have to watch the New York Times run front-page stories on Hillary's emails before yeah. we recognize that maybe the New York Times isn't on our side? And yet... That's true, but I want everyone to realize having a Joe Rogan on the left is impossible because Joe Rogan's popular because he's willing to say any conspiracy theory. He's willing to lie. Ben Shapiro is popular. Candace Owens is popular. Um, all these popular podcasts, Tucker Carlson, they are willing to spread any conspiracy theory and proudly lie about literally anything. They have no standards for literally anything. And you're not going to find a liberal content creator who's going to be like that. Um, and if there's a liberal content creator like Pod Save America, for example, they're going to come off as very boring uh, and not very interesting. They're not going to grow to Rogan levels. You can't really grow to Rogan levels and be completely intellectually honest. You could even see this with like Sam Harris versus the other people that were in the intellectual dark web or whatever. Because um, Sam Harris has not grown nearly as much as the others did. Uh, because Sam Harris is the only one rooted in some type of logical reality. So instead of laying hands on progressive media, instead of validating progressive media, instead of calling to build up progressive media, um, they continue to like heap benefits, confer all these benefits onto the mainstream media that, that's showing them through both sidesism, through bad, like, bad coverage that they just don't, they're not into it. They don't care. They don't care about being so on the team. I think the issue is, um, and this is, there are so many different things that go into this, it's not simple, but I think that things like the media, a lot of this is downstream from another thing that I think is really important. Uh, I don't know if you have any children or if you've ever had a dog before or whatever, but if, if somebody is allowed to do something and there's not a punishment for it, then they're going to continue to do that behavior, especially if they reap something positive for it. And one of the most frustrating things about the upcoming Trump presidency is, uh, I'm sorry, I don't care who you are, I don't care how you say I'm delusional, out of touch. Biden and this administration did a phenomenal job at riding the ship on this economy. We are outperforming every other economy in the world um, when it comes to metrics like inflation. Bro, you want to talk about higher Dan is a small business computer guy over here. You want to hire a computer programmer? You go to the United Kingdom, these guys make like 35,000 quid a year, okay? You know yeah, and also we talked already about triple manufacturing under Biden versus Trump. Uh, producing more oil than Trump. Uh, we produce more oil than Saudi Arabia and Russia right now. People don't believe that. No Americans even know that Biden produces more energy than Trump did, including green energy on top of the oil. Um, so no one knows that. But narratives matter. The vibes are what matters. Trump won off of total vibes. People didn't like the incumbent. Um, that's all this election was about. Um, there's a chance Democrats could have ran anyone and, and lost. 
uh, th there is a chance. People don't really think about the actual economic numbers or policies that cause things. They don't know that. They feel narratives. They feel slogans. It's easier for them to have a four-word slogan versus like a half-hour policy, detailed, uh, detailed policy analysis. The United States is in an amazing... And Democrats, Democrats need to get better. Democrats must get better. We must run candidates who can set narratives, and we must run candidates who are good with a microphone. Over here, you want to hire a computer programmer? You go to the United Kingdom. These guys make like thirty-five thousand quid a year. Okay, mm -hmm. the United States is in an amazing spot compared to the rest of the world. However, uh, we're not allowed to, to take credit for it because there is no. At the end of the day, there's no factual reduction to anything that's being said or to anything that's happening. Like Trump is allowed to get on stage and simultaneously say things like, uh, "Aren't you happier now than when you were? Weren't you happier four years ago?" Yeah, yeah. Despite the fact that we were living in lockdown and they weren't happy four years ago. That's, that's why they voted him out of office. Fucking garbage bags. Yeah, work. there is no tens of thousands per day. Yeah, They're so buried in mass graves in this country. There's absolutely zero account accountability on the Republican side. And I think that there's, uh, there are other issues that I feel strongly about, especially you've seen me scream about things probably on stream. I feel strongly about misinformation. I feel strongly about policy. I feel strongly about immigration and foreign policy, blah, 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 blah. All of that though is downstream, I think, from the lack of accountability. Like how many times, I know you've heard, how many times has a Republican come up to you and talked about uh, Joe Biden calling all Republicans MAGA Republicans or about Hillary Clinton using the word deplorables, right? How many? Bro, or the garbage comment, after Donald Trump spent weeks calling Democrats vermin, enemies of America, immigrants are poisoning the blood of America, um, saying that dictators like Kim Jong-un and, and uh, Vladimir Putin are super strong, but like John Kelly is weak and pathetic. Um, how long did Trump call, uh, he called Nancy Pelosi B-I-T-C-H the day before the election, uh, basically called Kamala a, a sex worker. Um, and all of these terrible things. He talked about using the U.S. military against the enemy within, which was including pretty much all liberals and people that opposed him. And Biden barely mutters, yeah, I think if you think Puerto Rico is, is garbage, then, then you're garbage. And MAGA cried. They cried. The biggest whining session ever. They want to be the bully and the ultimate victim. They want to be the biggest bully and the biggest victim at the same time. It's insane. Or when Kamala said to the uh, kids, like, oh, you must be at the wrong rally. They made that into an anti-Christian thing just because the kids were being annoying. And Kamala said, go to the smaller, smaller rally down the street. They're like searching for reasons to be victims. I, I swear. Bill, um, Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro. How many of these people have written full articles about how they would never vote for Donald for Trump? Trump? And they're some of his biggest blazers today, right? It was Ben Shapiro first. Who um, Remember on Ted, January seventh? Ted 7th, Cruz getting his oh, wife Ted fucking Cruz, dominated. Yeah. In an it was Ben Shapiro who, before I did, called it, and this was an insurrection. Nobody, I don't even know if anybody in the media was using that term. And Ben Shapiro came out and said this was an insurrection. Get to be honest. And I was like, January twenty. Oh, you mean when the police let people through the building? Like there is no accountability on the Republican side for anything. Like it's yeah, excusable, unjustifiable, awful on every level, disgusting on every level, just terrible, terrible. When you have rioters taking over the U.S. Capitol building, the seat of American democracy. And when you have those rioters saying that they are doing so in the name of the president of the United States, and when you have them doing that to the legislative branch of the government, and when you have those people, they, 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 they are rioters. They are not protesters, okay? As soon as you commit an act of vandalism or violence, you are no longer in the category of protester. You are now a rioter. And unlike some folks who have justified riots based on the perspective of the rioters, if you are a criminal, you are a criminal, and you should go to jail. You should go to jail. And this was an attempted act of insurrection. I mean, technically speaking, that's what it was, considering that the reason that this happened is because Congress was simply there doing their constitutional duty and tabulating the state-certified electoral count. It is an evil act to invade the seat of government and do violence to people. It turns out we now have over a dozen police officers who are injured. There are four people who are dead. One person was shot. Three people died in medical emergencies yesterday. Th that's as bad an event as I've ever seen in American public life. Frankly, I think that in, in many ways, it's the worst thing to happen to the United States of America since 9-11. But, but I mean, that, that, that lends itself to the exact argument from before. That, that, that is, that, that's the benefit you get from having a right-wing media ecosystem where their sole goal is not to like perpetuate accurate information. It's not even to hold these people accountable. They are, they are a propaganda arm of the Republican Party. Yeah. And we have no equivalency on True. the left. And, and when I say equivalency, like we don't need somebody to just cheer. Can you, are you allowed to curse on this stream? Yeah. yeah. Is there any, you know, there, there's no equivalency. Like, like we're not looking to, to be cheerleaders in the same way that like, that like, you know, Steve Bannon and all these people can be cheerleaders for Trump. That fought, that I was trying not to respond to the comments, but I just saw the person who made a David Pacman, a fake David Pacman account, commenting. And I want you to know, it's still very sad and depressing. You took the time out of your day to make a Dave Pacman 
parody YouTube page to make comments on videos. That's a really depressing use of time. I'm sorry. That Fox and Friends are cheerleaders for Trump, and and uh, but like we we don't have any any equivalent in terms of like what we're able to do to to bolster. Like come on, uh, David Pakman too. He's like the most boring. I like David, but he's so like why even take the time? What's the point? Why why is that funny to you, bro? Get a hobby. Democrats and like we do to your exact point. I mean, look at the economic condition that we have. If Donald Trump had the economy that we yep. have today, where he added 16 million jobs, had the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years, a record high stock market, and the strongest economy on the planet, and no recession after COVID, you think he wouldn't be beating his chest on a daily basis? You think that guy wouldn't be filleting himself on national television? Donald Trump is simultaneously not at all responsible for COVID while getting to take credit for the lower immigration and everything under COVID, while Joe Biden is responsible for all the inflation, like COVID never even happened, and gets no credit for writing the economy at all. It's right. But the fact is, he can show up on Fox News and they'll repeat this all yep. day. And they start at five o'clock in the morning, and it goes into their midday coverage. And we end with Laura Ingram, um, uh, you know, and and end the evening with like Greg Gutfeld's Comedy Hour. And, and it just never stops. And these people are pumped with this stuff all day long. All of their viewers are just have this information pumped into their veins to the point where now, four years later, you know, to your point, we're talking about the revisionist history when it comes to COVID. They think that that was some period of great prosperity. We were burying Americans in mass graves. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? We lost three million jobs. The unemployment rate was six and a half percent and the economy suffered an economic contraction we our economy shrunk when donald trump i remember before covid thinking people would care about the mass death but no one cared like very few people cared about how many people were dying they were so like i feel like that alone showed how selfish americans are um if you weren't literally putting all the bodies in the mass graves and you lived in the middle of nowhere you didn't care that so many people were dying or you just didn't believe it um, I was shocked. I was astonished. I, I had family members die from COVID. I had friends who had family members die from COVID. We lost community members to COVID and no one cared. They're just like, yeah, people die, whatever. It's just like, bro, if I'm not affected, I don't care, bro. If I'm not affected directly, it's not on me. Americans are wild, bro. Was president. You want to say, oh yeah, it was COVID. Well, why did we have 5% of the world's population and 20% of the world's deaths? And they're like, oh, I'm a big tough guy. You guys are victims. But I can't wear a mask for more than five minutes or I suffocate. I can't wear a mask. <laughs> you guys are victims. These, these liberals are victims. They're scared to go outside without a mask. I can't wear a mask for five seconds. If I wear a mask, I'm going to die. That's literally bro like, um, how many conversations I had? Because I'm a runner. I ran like 10 miles with a mask on just for fun. Just to show people they were being babies. Because so many people were having panic attacks being all dramatic and insecure and sad and, and pathetic and weak like oh i can't wear a mask for more than five minutes it's like bro calm down there's not that many of you like i, I know some people have health conditions but that's not every single conservative bro we, yeah. I mean, unless if the condition is just being like a little a little snowflake but well why did we have five percent of the world's population and 20 percent of the world's deaths we yeah like what was it three million or one million people how many people died from covid it's millions yeah, but it's yeah, it's you, you just can't you can't the thing that I keep stressing to people and I'll keep fighting on this um, is uh, we we live in a different we have a different set of rules right now. And this is what me and Pisco fight over a lot. Yeah, I love Pisco. He's a great guy. Um, <laughs> but uh, I get frustrated when people keep saying like, ha, like, how much more can we train our MMA to beat this dude who keeps showing up with larger and larger machetes every time we have a fight? You you cannot exist in this environment. I don't care for you, for Brian, for Biden, for Obama, anybody. You will never you cannot beat somebody who can take credit for everything, even things they haven't done and walk away from all accountability. For but it. I think impossible. Brian said it. I think Brian mm -hmm. said it. Brian said there's some lines we will not cross. We're not necessarily needing to be as servile as Charlie Kirk or Steve Bannon. Um, but there is value in, I mean, the Democrats were asleep at the wheel. Clearly that they had an advantage that we were lacking. Bro, just reporting the facts puts you in favor of Democrats. The media was scared to look biased, so they stopped talking about facts uh, because it was so against Trump's campaign. They banned facts at one of the debates because Trump's campaign requested it. It's so sad. It's so sad, bro, that we're in this environment where saying a simple fact can offend a conservative. I mean, you might say something racist or you might like insult someone that's trans or like, uh, you know, you want to deport undocumented immigrants, bro. But at least, at least I get, you know, a little bit fired up over that, dude. I don't get upset because someone says a fact. You know, I can say a fact and you'll have a, you'll have a whole, a whole fit. It's really something you got to get fixed. I'm sorry. You got to, you got to get that checked out. Going into this fight and we got fucked. But that doesn't mean we just give up. And I think that there is something to build here. There's something to go forward on. And it, but it can't be listening to the Chuck Schumers of the world and the New York Times of the world. It, it can't be that because that doesn't work. I mean, at, th at this point, like we've we've seeded a lot of this ground. I think I think, and a lot of the conversation I'm hearing around like the creator space is like we have to figure out how to how to communicate with people 
um, in a way that we're not doing right now. Like watching watching the right dominate, especially with the issues that they have. Like there is no reason why we should have, why why this space should be so available to the right when your positions are like are like. Stripping women of reproduct, like stripping, like blocking abortion rights, and you're like a, a, a 19 year old guy. How, how does that make any sense? Like, how, how do they? How <laughs> we, we've seeded this space so so thoroughly to them. The fact that they're able to to win on issues like that really goes to show like the extent to which we are just absent in these spaces that we need to be in. Just read the YouTube. It's also hard to craft a narrative when you're being honest about something. So we need someone who's very confident in these convictions, a very smart politician whose entire goal is just showing people why they're wrong. Someone confident, someone that feels like a leader. That's one of the reasons people will vote Trump, not because they know policy. That's definitely not why. But because Trump says he can fix it. Trump says he's confident. Trump says he's a strong leader. Not because he is, but people want a strong leader. And that's what Trump has projected. And I think... He's one of the weakest and most insecure people of all time. Uh, but still, um, and I think back to Obama, I think to Gavin Newsom, I even think to someone like an AOC who speaks confidently and they know what narrative they're talking about. Bernie Sanders, they know what they're talking about. Kamala Harris was having a constant crisis on who she was as a politician. This entire campaign being pulled in like 5,000 different directions. We need a candidate who is hyper-focused, locked in and ready to talk about these issues we can win on facts but we need to do it in a way that's very convincing we need to believe it and we, and we need people who are good at it there is a skill there's a skill in holding a microphone like that really goes to show like the extent to which we are just absent in these spaces that we need to be in just read the youtube comments every time we're on a live stream your youtube comments your live comments uh -huh. they're all red pilled yeah the, um, I do agree there were mistakes made before, and actually, I, this is actually one of the things that I give uh, Kamala's campaign a lot of credit for. Even though it was a little cringe, that um, the white dudes for Harris stuff, I think stuff like that was really good because there was too much of this like finger waving at like white guys and men for too long that basically made us that if you were a white guy, if you were a male, you had to go listen to Jordan Peterson, you had to go listen to. It's very true. Many progressive groups, and I criticized them in the past. They went way too far into the white man hating thing, excluding white men, excluding white people in general. I spoke out against that. I thought it was not good. And I do think that hurt us um, in this election and that entire movement going a little bit too far with that anti-white sort of rhetoric. Um, it's not anti-white racism, but it's anti-white rhetoric and everything. Um, that definitely did go too far. Uh, so I agree with that. Um, please drop a like on the stream. Hit subscribe to the channel. Um, like I said, helping support this content is really big. I do my best job to give a disciplined take on these things, a pragmatic take. Um, so yeah, subscribe and channel memberships again are $2.99. They start at $2.99. You can help out my channel tons and help out my channel's growth and help me keep doing this for just $2.99 per month or maybe more, more maybe $4.99 or $10.99 or $9.99, something like that. Uh, you can join in the description. Thank you. To these red pillars, because everybody in the in the mainstream, like Democratic Party, hated you, or it felt that way at least on the culture front, right? On Twitter and in schools, it was just this constant demonization about these mainstream, like main class people, yeah, you know, majority class people. I feel like at this point, like I gotta like go to a gym somewhere, start cycling HGH and like, on camera, <laughs> on live, and be like, that's my that's my gateway into the into uh, into like reaching Z Gen Z guys at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, unironically. Uh, um, unironically, yeah. Well, uh, give me, give me, what do you, so obviously we need to have more, I, I want to push, I want to push you and Pisco, because yeah. Pisco over here has been a little questioner, okay? He's not <laughs> answering a question, I'm curious. Like, what do you think, what needs to change? What needs to be better? How do you compete with a guy, okay? Like, we're going to have a debate, and I'm going to come out, and I'm going to say, well, actually, um, in case you guys didn't know, Brian is actually fucking Satan, and, and, they, and half the audience believes it. How do you win a debate with a guy like that? What are you doing? Like, how, how do you, what do you do? And it doesn't have to be personal, I just mean, like, in general, like, a policy conversation in the U.S., like, what do you do? How do you, what, what kind of media presence do we even be pushing for? Yeah. Someone said the majority of people in America and plenty of other countries do not want free range elective abortion. We did not ask for free range elective abortion. There is that's not happening. The late term abortions are all medical. The reason they don't want to put restrictions on it is so that doctors are not in weird legal cases where they let a woman die because they're scared to be arrested for it. That's the reason they're against these abortion bans in like Texas and Georgia because women are dying because doctors don't want to get caught into a legal dispute if a court um, disagrees. Something is necessarily is necessary for a medical purpose um they're not executing babies after birth either these are all if you know the mothers have a crib chosen they have a name chosen and they find out at the final second that their child will not be viable their baby will not be viable that's what the seventh eighth and ninth term or, or month uh, abortions are for and the post-birth abortions you hear about are um when a, a baby's born and it's non-viable the doctor's not forced to keep it alive 
It's about reducing harm and also making sure women get the right health care. No one's saying that you should be able to produce a child and kill it for fun or kill it because you just want to. No one is proposing that. Anyone that told you anyone wants that in America is lying to you. Donald Trump lied about, lied about this relentlessly. Donald Trump lied to you about that topic. I think you need candidates. Go ahead, Brian. Just go talk to any person. Go talk to someone. And this is why we need to have our network so liberals know what they're saying, too. So liberals have an actual response. And I'm shocked. Thank you so much for becoming a supporter, for becoming a member, Mr. Nobody. I really appreciate that. Um, but I'm shocked Tim Walls did not have a better response in the debate that he had with, with J.D. Vance on this topic, to be honest, because they talked about the afterbirth abortions and late-term abortions. Uh, Walls could have made it more of a women's health care issue, a women's health care issue, uh, and talked about how this influences women's health care. But again, we can talk about policies and facts, but it needs to be convincing. We need to be confident in talking about it. We need to have our, we need to have our messaging on point for these things. I was going to say, I think it's everything. I think it starts with having candidates with, with some real identity be beyond anti-Trumpism, because anti-Trumpism by itself did not work. The people had access to all the fucked up shit that Trump did, and it wasn't enough. Didn't Trump want an anti-wokeism, though? What is he running on? He's running on a vision that, like, he at least can sell in a paragraph. You Concepts know, of a vision? Yeah, well, I, I think that that's true. I mean, we tried it before. When you ask someone, like, what does Trump represent? There are real things in your mind that are envisioned. When you ask, what does the Democratic Party represent? I mean, if I know, if I know exactly, like, if any kind of generic Democrat, their, what is their identity? So I think that the candidate quality needs to change. You need to have people who can talk, yeah. people who can actually talk and sound like real people. Um, and I think that there are a lot of commentators in the, I don't know, liberal left, socialist, whatever you want to call it, frame like space that can talk like real people. But for whatever reason, we have some robots that we're running and who can't relate to the American people. They can't describe the positive things that they're doing and why it's affecting their lives. And, you know, the but then you run, the, you run this huge risk of people just calling you out of touch. Like, I feel like that's what happens with Democrats because I've, like, I've made these impassioned pleas to people where I'm like, bro, like, you know, they were able to, Biden did forgive some student loan stuff to people or, or you know, we have expanded access to things like health. But you're not in charge. And it, sure, but, but I mean, if they say it too, then it's just. Yes, exactly. Hold them to the argument, okay? Don't let them get away with pro-life. They are not pro-life, okay? They are, pro, they are natural, they're pro-natural death and pro-natural life. Unless if they say like, oh, we love the death penalty and whatever else. They're not pro-life. Pro they're anti-choice. They are anti-choice. They can be pro-life and not be anti-choice. You can be pro-choice and be personally pro-life. The actual policy position, when we talk about what the government's going to do, what the government's going to regulate, the government is going to say, can you choose to have an abortion? Or can you not choose? Are you anti-choice? Are you anti the woman making that choice? You are anti-choice. You are not pro-life. Do not buy their framing. You are not pro-life. Just immediately like, oh, these guys are out of touch. Well, Hillary tried that with the America's already great. Bullshit. This country sucks. And how does it, how does Trump, here's something that makes me mad, okay? There are legitimate citizens in, in countries that try to flee these countries, okay? Because they're so in the United States, people will come to this country illegally for the opportunity to work here. Mm. To, to work here, they'll come. To, they'll flee to this country legally. They'll come to this country legally to work here. But people say, why do illegal immigrants come here? To leech off of our amazing welfare state? Like, like they don't live in reality at all. How do you, how do you contend with that? Sorry, I'm repeating myself. Go ahead. I don't know, Brian, what do you think? Um, I, I think it's both. I, I think that the Democratic Party is run by some stooges and they aren't able to relate their messaging and the media is. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Frigadelic. Um, Pro-life, meaning you're going to be anti-choice and also risk many women's lives. Many women's, many women's, many people's lives um, as you force them to carry pregnancies that are dangerous for them. Because the doctor doesn't know what the state's laws are, and the doctor doesn't want to go to prison for murder if they do a medical procedure and a judge disagrees. Good point. Just kind of following along in a way, if, if they don't have candidates that they're excited about, and if the, um, you know people who have excitement aren't being let into the right doors and aren't in the right meetings, how can there be synergy? I really do think, like, I really do think the media is a huge part. I think the media is so much bigger of a part of this than any other. I think our policies are correct. Like. I think the vast majority of, of democratic policies look looking to looking to combat climate change, looking to expand healthcare, looking to bolster unions. We have the we have the the the, the pro act, um, looking to you know continue pushing forward gun safety reforms. Like whatever it is, the policies are correct and the policies are popular. And that's by the way why we keep winning ballot initiatives. So people are voting in Missouri. Positions, Missouri. But they're not voting for democratic politicians. And I think there's there's a few things. One, we have to run people. I think people who need, need to run. Who Bro, someone said abortion is bad for the body. Bro, oh. Let me tell you what uh, I have this thing. You might, you may not, you may not have heard of it. Uh, but there's um. So women have a thing. 
Um, it's called a, uh, a, a you know what, um, and babies uh, come out of it, and uh, a thing called uh, pregnancy. I know you don't know anything about any of these things, but pregnancies are very dangerous. So putting limits on, you know, what a woman can do and what a doctor can do, put a, putting a limit on their decision making process when a woman is trying to, you know, uh, you know, give birth, um, putting any government limits on that, bringing the government into that process is a little bit dangerous, a little, just a little dangerous for the woman. Um, just so you know actually have and if you need some biology you can google it um you can you might get some weird links uh but you can get some biology lessons um you could go talk to some people who, who've had children um yeah i think there's, there's a few things one we have to run people i think people who need, need to run who actually have personality and like charisma i think it's a big part of it and like uh -huh. are, true could we, will we miss out on Please, some of the charisma. best legislators in the world yeah is it gonna matter if we don't get in power or those people don't get elected no like no all the best policies made by the unelected like all the best policies made by people who you never hear their names the politicians their job is managing public relations essentially with their constituents and talking about po policy initiatives and getting those to be popular and voting on those with, you know, and, and working with other politicians. But the people who write the policies are never the politician. Uh, we need someone who can get these offices and lead this narrative. Um, but yeah, that, that's the, Oh, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Really appreciate that. I'm sorry. I spent the day getting passport information, uh, together. They are eating the dogs. Versus we have to explain standard medical procedures to save women's lives. This isn't a fight we can win. It is very difficult. And I've had someone say to me like, dude, there's not like, because I told them there's different laws in red and blue states. So a woman, uh, you know, a, a woman might have to go from a red state to a blue state to get the proper care. And they said to me in the most condescending tone, oh, yeah, as if the medical procedures different in different states based, based on if they're red or blue. As if like that'd be so dumb as if that's actually happening. And I'm like, bro. I'm like, dude, brother, brother, you realize that is happening. It's America. You realize this is happening. Different states, red and blue states have different medical procedures for women because of these abortion laws, because Roe v. Wade got overturned. And they were talking to me like that's a foreign concept because they didn't understand it, but they were so confident. They were so confident. They were so confident because they thought it was a dumb idea. They thought it was dumb that a doctor's ability to save a woman or, or to treat a pregnancy would be different in a red or blue state. They thought that was dumb. They thought they were making a point. And I'm like, yeah, that, that would be dumb. I agree. I, I agree. That would be very dumb. Reality of it. I, I was, who was it? Um, was it Patrick Leahy uh, from Vermont who retired because he was like 110 yep. years old, right? Yeah. And he was replaced by, by like, a 72 year old. <laughs> Geriatric. <laughs> yeah. Hey, who was that? Who was that? Was it Feinstein that like died in Congress? Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's she, mean. But died in office. Like, but 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 Leahy, I think, was like ninety, and then they replaced him with Peter Welch, who was like the young buck who took his his spot in the in the Senate. And he's as old as Biden. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, He's, he must be 72, I think. 72, 72. No, it's definitely an issue. Age is, we got a lot of old fucking Democrats. That is true. I mean, I mean think about some of the most popular ones, too, like Bernie. Sure. Yeah, now. that's true, though, because a lot of people say we need to replace some younger people. A lot of those younger people will be like, I vote for Bernie and Harvey. I don't know how many would actually vote for him, but yeah. No, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, a matter, it's not really a matter of age so much as it is like a matter of like of, of being able to communicate with people. Like, Bernie, Bernie's fine. He's, yeah. he's clearly able to do that even now. And his message has been, he, he is probably the most consistent messenger in the entire Democratic Party. His message has never strayed. But like, we only have a few positions where, like, we only have at this point 48 47 46 senators in the u.s senate and to, to squander one of those do you think identity politics from democrats turned off blue voters no they were already turned off they predetermined to not like democrats for those reasons um kamala harris made it a point to not talk about identity she did not talk about her being a woman the media did but you cannot find a kamala speech where she centers her being a woman of color at all i mean a kamala speech her campaign they purposely did not bring those things up because people use identity against democrats identity was brought up constantly by republicans trump talked about kamala's race all the time trump talked about kamala's gender all the time republicans couldn't stop talking about her gender and race that was the only thing they talked about identity was the republicans obsession they were obsessed over identity i don't know why democrats are getting blamed for that i know that you know, we had these social justice warriors from like 2014 to like 2020, but now we have anti-social justice warriors. We have white identity politics now. It's wild. I hate, ooh, the reversal is wild. And the only thing I don't like about it is the hypocrisy. Being a victim and a bully at the same time, just being a bully all the time, what Trump says about people. You say one thing, you say one fact, you ask about one introspective thought and they get so mad.
I guess I'm out of somebody here. who was like, yes, next in line because he was a you know congressman and now he's going to be a senator. But like, who cares? another septuagenarian, you know, it just seems so wild that in these rare opportunities where we have people who are in positions where they can actually have an audience and have the ability to talk to people, we keep using it for for like for. Not, not just people who are too old, but certainly people who are too old, but people who aren't able to connect with regular people. And so whereas Republicans have Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley and like these people who do resonate as, as, as reprehensible as I think they are, who do resonate with their audiences, we have like we have Peter Welch who doesn't, who, who nobody would be able to recognize if 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 he was sitting on their laps. I think know? that's a fantastic like, point. Every one of these you know conservatives that you mentioned, they're superstars. They're like movie stars you know ted cruz okay. matt gates marjorie taylor green they're, they're people that like everyone's excited to see them when they come like all these MAGA supporters when they walk in the room they, they light up the room no one really is excited like would you be excited to see chuck schumer as someone would be to see like okay I but hold know, on wait, I, I need to i need to take a quick yeah. pause to say okay pause. to fuck the electorate okay wait matt gates is wild didn't matt gates do a lot of weird things with minors and like sex trafficking and matt gates won again isn't matt gates a little weird matt gates is a little weird a lot of these Republicans are a little weird, bro. It's like they're either like, uh, they're either hedge fund managers, uh, they work in venture capital, or they do really, really weird things, or they do all three. Okay, but hold on. Uh, I, I, I need to, I need to take a quick yeah. pause to say, okay, pause. to fuck the electorate, okay? Because these are the people you voted for, not you, me too, yeah. right? Because people will say things like, uh, and this is why I'm also not sure if I believe it sometimes, because people say things like, why do we have fucking Biden? Who's, well, what do you mean? Look at all the other options you had to choose from, and you didn't pick any of them, right? Why, I don't know if the, the super delegates were the reason why Biden managed to beat, uh, you know, Kamala, Pete, um, yeah. the, the, the 20 other people on that stage, right? Like the electorate chooses, same thing you look at like people like Nancy Pelosi, right? What is it? Congress has like a 9% approval rating, but your own representative has like an 80% approval rating. Like they keep choosing them over and over again. So like arguably the only way that the Republicans were able to change so much to some extent was because of like an abandonment of, we don't really have like the Republican party anymore, right? We have got like Trump's party. Like it is, it is Donald Trump's party. There is no party without Donald Trump, right? Whereas for the democratic side, Biden got pushed out. That's fine. There's no leader of the democratic party right now. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if, um, yeah. Listen, I, I don't think you have to accept all of people like Hassan's worldview to say that. I think liberals and conservatives can use some humility and stop making assumptions about the other side, even though it's what makes a lot of money. You realize Donald Trump came out and called immigrants the poison that's poisoning the blood of America, that they're spreading their terrible genetics, calling liberals vermin and enemies of America. And you're talking about liberals and conservative media pundits spreading this? Trump started this entire political era of nonstop chaos and violence. This was not a thing in politics in America before Trump came onto the scene. This, uh, you know, unrelenting, constant, uh, dumb, the most dumb way to communicate. We, we communicate, we might as well communicate through cave drawings at this point. And, and we, we might as well just like do cave drawings and grunt at each other. I think we'll get more of a point across. Like, how do you just avoid everything Trump has ever said? How do you just like shut that off in your brain? Like, I don't understand people. I got that on, on uh, you know, the other day, just like, oh, just don't generalize. Like, bro, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, bro? I know what statements you stand by. Maybe they had a semblance of the point when... And if you really disagree with it, show me why it's not true. Show me why it's not true. Have a conversation with me. I'm more than happy to have a conversation. I can't say that about the other side. I'm always accepting call-ins. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if... um. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't think you have to accept all of people like Hassan's worldview to say that maybe they had a semblance of the point when when we nominate I, I again i think biden did a great job but when you nominate someone like biden you're playing scared you're playing you're constantly playing on defense and i, I constantly think all these Play on defense for, you okay yeah i'm Go sorry i love you i love you you keep wait hold on you keep saying this people keep saying this that not, you, when you're nominating biden you're playing scared Trump literally lost to Biden, and they renominated him. He's he's got the entire party held hostage, no, no. and we're the ones that are scared. It, it goes to voters. It goes to voters, and yeah. it also goes to the media infrastructure. Okay. And and I think that Democrats are always scared and anxious. And even felt it yesterday. I mean, obviously the it, yeah, but we're scared because we're playing the same. Word. Republicans aren't scared because they know they're going to win, or it was rigged. Like what a great worldview to have. They, he was already calling it rigged yeah. when the when Philadelphia was just being reported. What the fuck? sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I, that, I was gonna say that. They don't necessarily need a strong man in a push for populism. Democrats need someone confident, though. So, like, Obama used some populist rhetoric, but he was just a confident liberal who knew a lot about policy. If you watch Obama versus McCain or Obama versus Romney, Obama knew these policy details like the back of his hand. Like, o Obama was a, a policy wonk in the way he described Obamacare to people, and he made it sound very simple. This very complex Affordable Care Act, he made it sound very simple and made it work. 
Um, he sold all these policies in a very rhetoric, rhetorically effective way in a manner that made him seem like a more capable leader than the other person. That narrative can be set by facts and policy. We don't need a strongman populist person who's a demagogue. We, we don't need that. We just need someone who's really good at politics. There are people available, but Democrats don't nominate them. And they don't have a process for properly nominating them because it's all about legacy and about privilege and about who your parents are and about how much money you have and about whose turn it is to run what race because you, you're you owed that position. So we had to run Hillary in 2016 because she was owed that position. It was her time. It's, it's you know, I'm with her. Um, the Democrats have to get all of this elitism out of the party. And I don't mean elite as in the fake elitism that Trump complains about because Trump is the ultimate elite crony business con man. You, you know, he's giving away the entire country to big business. But elitis, uh, elitism in the sense that uh, Democratic Party leadership feels that they're the only ones who can make any decisions. They don't listen to anyone except top leadership. Democrats need to cut that out and have some humility and look at the evidence on the table and be willing to change strategies. Democrats need to change strategies. Do you think Republicans care about principle? No, they don't care about anything. They don't care about policy. They care about power, winning power, and using power. Democrats need to be better at doing that. Same thing. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm in complete agreement. Like they, I think Democrats are scared because like we know the stakes. <laughs> and, and, and also, there's nothing to be, there's nothing for Republicans to be afraid of. Like what Biden comes into office, the, the fact, the reality is that the last three, Repu the last three Democratic presidents that have come in have all cleaned up recessions from Republicans. What, what do they have to be afraid of? True. Like, there's nothing for, for a Republican to be afraid. Of. What a Democrat comes into office and we add jobs and we fix the economy. So of course they're not afraid. Worst case scenario, we just have better economic conditions than when than when we started. Absolutely Democrats true. Because, Democrats are scared because if Republicans take power, then we have assholes like uh, um, uh, John Eastman and and you know Rick Grinnell and and uh, and all these guys that are going to be in power, promising to to kick every career civil servant out of government, and replace them with political appointees. This I mean, is why huge disparity here. This is why when things. Yeah, and before they get on this next topic, it is true. Elon Musk already was in a call with Russia, Ukraine, um, uh, or was it Ukraine or just Russia? But regardless, with Donald Trump, the other person on the call, the only person on the call that was not a president of a world leader or a leader of a country um, was Elon Musk. Elon Musk is running the White House. I hope I hope people understand that. Elon Musk and Peter Thiel and these moneyed interests are running the White House. They're appointing the richest people in the world to run this to run uh, to run this administration, but. They're going to own the libs. They're going to own the libs and they're going to deport the undocumented immigrants that are not committing crimes. G great. We're going to give the entire government away to the richest people of all time. They never thought it would be this easy, by the way. The richest billionaires never thought it would be so easy to convince you to hand away the entire government to them. The wealthy never thought they could get the most bullshit con man who did nothing in his life except be a logo, be a brand who was handed wealth from a young age, who never worked a real job, who has the most tiny pampered baby hands ever, who whines about everything. All they had to do was hire a reality TV show guy to come and talk about immigration in the most sensational way possible. And you are willing to vote away the entire government and just give it to Elon Musk and give it to Peter Thiel and give it to all the dark money in the world. Because the swamp was never money to you. The swamp was never the billionaire class. The swamp was never power in general. The swamp was never caring about your community the swamp was always settling personal grievances the swamp was always being mad at liberals the swamp was always getting rid of people in your community that made you uncomfortable that didn't speak the same language that were from different cultures that you know didn't that cho choose different genders and date different genders and date the same sex that was your grievance that was a drain the swamp because trump has done nothing but add more corruption to the government including his own family, which Donald Trump's stepkid, Jared Kushner, left the White House, instantly used the connections to Donald Trump to get a $2 billion investment from a Saudi Arabian investor after never working in private equity before. $2 billion, but you're obsessed over Hunter Biden. You don't complain at all about Jared Kushner, but you'll complain all day about Hunter Biden because you care about owning liberals. You don't care about the, the state of America. You care about you being insecure about these issues. You care about being mad, being angry, being scared, and you are unwilling to break that cycle. You are willing to be stubborn. And that is the, that is the limit of what, you'll, what you're gonna do as a person. It's like the immunity ruling happened. They pissed me off so much because realistically, Republicans aren't worried about criminal immunity for because what the fuck is a Democrat gonna fucking do with it? What what do get, like, drive with a suspended license and not be held accountable? <laughs> what nothing, literally nothing is gonna happen. But we're on the other hand, right? We have Biden in office right now.
someone donated ten dollars and said they're a Bernie supporter who supported who's voted Trump. Um, I appreciate the ten dollars, but you are an example of my rant. You're just mad, bro. Bernie talked about being angry at the system. You liked him because Bernie was mad. Trump talked about being mad at the system. You liked him because you're because because uh, Trump was mad. You are gullible to whoever's going to be more mad at the system. You need to focus on policies that actually help working class people versus just supporting demagogues who yell at things. Because I love Bernie Sanders, but he is a populist speaker. And that's what made you like him and like Trump at the same time. You need some actual grounded principles and what you want to happen for your community, for the working class, for the middle class, wherever class you are, whatever class you are. You need to find out what policies can help them and which politicians are actually su supporting those policies. You are a vibes voter. You are voting off of vibes. Thank you for the $10, but please go get some help. Who's able to wield whatever immunity ruling the Supreme Court handed down? They said anything that falls under the umbrella of an official. Act sorry, sorry. Uh, these guys don't like that, by the way, and they called me stupid when I said it. But now what they're all starstruck. They're like, whoa, hey, wait a second. This is a great idea. You know what you are? You're just a sexier version Jordan. of me. No, 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 stop it. That's it. Get some help. I'm not saying I'm not saying that Joe Biden should like commit crimes. I'm just saying it is so. We Democrats know that we are so unwilling to use the levers of power yep. that we have at our disposal that it's almost like a, a, it's laughable. The prospect of Joe Biden actually doing anything that the Supreme Court has just given him carte blanche to do. We, we, we took control of government. Merrick Garland was so afraid of... Uh, <laughs> Rooster. Of Rooster. Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Putin said of Trump's victory, this is the beginning of a new world order. That should tell you everything you need to know about the future of Ukraine. Yeah, 100%. Um, the United States will now be serving Russia, China, North Korea, and other authoritarian dictatorships. Again, we traded away freedom because of people's personal biases and grievances, grievances against liberalism and liberals in general and gay people and trans and, and immigrants and whatever. Um, we're now on the side of Russia and other authoritarian dictatorships versus being on the side of NATO and the EU and Canada and other countries that share our values. Now we're going to support countries that don't because of Trump winning. Thank you. Thank you. A Thank you for the $20. DOJ, that he didn't lift a finger against Donald Trump for inciting a fucking insurrection for like two years before he finally deigned to appoint Jack Smith as a special counsel. And so Trump was able to prop up an entire presidential campaign and get it running before we even appointed Jack Smith to get moving on him inciting an insurrection against the U.S. government. That's how scared Democrats are to wield power when they have it. Crazy how that didn't happen. So I wish we, don't, we, don't I wish we would have shown half as much hustle as he did appointing her to do his little report on Biden as he did with uh, with Donald Trump, uh, bullying his employees around to hide boxes of classified fucking material that he was showing fucking reporters. Okay, Christ. I, I don't want to retread that ground because I think that there, <laughs> listen, there's a discussion to be had. I don't, personally, I don't put that, the blame on Merrick Garland there. And I think that there are problems in advocating what I think I'm hearing is Democrats should use the Department of Justice for Like it's plans. supposed to. We had, a, sorry, we had a big fight over this last night. You're good. Go ahead. Having, having, having Merrick Garland take action against Donald Trump for his avowed crimes <laughs> is not weaponizing the government. In, in fact, him not taking action against Donald Trump for his crimes, that is that is the weaponization of government. Oh, yes. Because that's saying that you're, that's politicizing the DOJ. But action was, a, 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 action was taken, Brian. A, action was taken, but what I'm hearing is it didn't happen fast enough, is what I'm hearing. Right. And what, what did that do? That emboldened that emboldened all of these people to either continue committing crimes or or basically prop up an entire camp, if, like prop up an entire campaign that would ultimately result in a, a winning presidential bid for Donald Trump. I mean, we, could, we like the American people didn't even have a chance to see him make his case in court because here we are four years later. And for something he did in January of 2021, we still haven't seen accountability for it. And now we're going to have we're going to have all these people walking free. You think he's going to pardon just a seditious conspiracy guys? You think he's going to pardon everyone? Every, every, everyone's out. Everyone's out with a vengeance and and. Uh, and they're already asking, by the way, like the, the insurrectionists who are in court right now, um, I, I believe like this morning are already asking for their for their um, uh, for these cases to be stayed pending whatever Donald Trump is going to do and his promises to uh, to pardon them. Listen, I, I, I hear you guys 100 percent. You guys are thinking that this would have made a difference, the, the extra two years, and it would have made Trump an unsuccessful presidential candidate. What's your evidence for that? I mean, the American people have had access to this information for ever since it happened. And yeah, there, but there's, there's a difference in terms of what breaks through. It is so, look, when you're, pol pol political freaks like us, when we watch everything happening on a daily basis, and, and like folks that are highly informed, that's one thing. Uh, but the vast majority of Americans aren't paying attention. And, it, and it, if that means it would take an actual trial or sentencing for them to finally pay attention. Did you see the number of, uh, there was some tweet somewhere where the, the search terms for, is Joe Biden, did Joe Biden drop out? Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yesterday. People don't pay attention to this stuff. And it takes a lot to have something like this break through and we deprived ourselves of the ability for him to actually be held accountable and for Americans to, to actually be made aware of what he did and instead he just pretty much got away scot-free because and it sucks it sucks that like that one um, it sucks that the one thing that we did see was it was bad and 
it got downplayed. The, the New York case, but it was definitely the weakest of the four. And um, it's so. It, it, it sucks because like. It should have gone to trial because that's what is supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. But I wish that wasn't the one that went to trial. Yes. That went to trial first because it, it just gave them another talking point. And like, there's a difference. Between, like, you have to weigh like, should it have gone to trial because it should have gone to trial? Yes. In a vacuum, sure. But like, from a media, pers a narrative perspective, that's that is true. But I, I would the narrative of like weaponization. I would like to though bring us back to reality because you better. Fucking Thank you for the $10 donation. I'm not going to yell this time. I'm a national liberal. I like Trump's Step Act and his Right to Try Act. Those helped my mom who suffers from congestive heart failure. I'm not against those policies. Bernie Sanders voted for both. That's good bipartisanship. Um, yeah, okay. But that doesn't really make sense for why you voted Trump again. Um, after Trump tried getting rid of the ACA with every single chance um, he got as president, um, John McCain stopped that. He still used executive orders to tear apart the ACA as much as possible. And it's Trump's number one healthcare goal on his website and on his plans, his actual plan, Project 2025. And also Agenda 47 is to repeal the ACA, which would also put your mother in a very bad position uh, when it comes to healthcare and costs, I would assume. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but it would make... 30 to 40 million Americans lose their health care um, and many more Americans lose access to good health care uh, because the ACA also gives a lot of things. Uh, it makes insurers provide things that we don't even think about anymore because we take it for granted. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so you're a national liberal. You're a nationalist liberal. Interesting believe that if Joe Biden had abandoned his wife chat. who had just had a child four months earlier to f the porn star and then st and then taken money and misappropriated bring us back to reality because you better fucking believe that if Joe Biden had abandoned his wife who had just had a child four months earlier to f the porn star and then st and then taken money and misappropriated or reported it falsely using a fucking lawyer to, to, to buy and kill that story you better believe that that would have been talked about for months by conservatives. So even though it might not have played well on our side, again, I do agree that it would have been nicer to, to, to see that documents case go to court. That documents case is crazy. Because a, a lot of people don't even know. Stuff. Yeah, people don't even know, like, fuck the document shit. Like, the main charges are related to obstruction. Him telling not, not to, to, to move around all that shit in, in Mar-a-Lago and, and him picking and choosing the boxes that he wanted to take with him when he was going back. Like, You're that's insane. Converted. Yeah. I mean, th that was a slam dunk case. It's obvious. Crazy that case, yeah. It, it is a travesty of justice that that will never see the light of day in a courtroom. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. But the American people, I'm sorry, they elected him anyway. And well, I, but they don't know about the. Do you think that they're gonna that Trump's gonna basically investigate Biden? Honest to God, no. You don't. Because think I think Trump is, it Trump is very much a person that exists in time. And mm -hmm. once he's elected, Biden will be in his review. He won't give a fuck. He'll be like, oh, cool. And he'll just go on and do whatever yeah, the fuck. I kind of think they'll be more focused on like what's immediately in front of him. I think they'll mm -hmm. say what everything needs to say to like appeal to people. Everybody wants blood. All these Repu all these Republicans think that the Biden they've been groomed into thinking that the Biden crime family are the greatest you know villains in the history of the world. And so if in the moment it means that they can finally prosecute Biden for all of his crimes, even though they've had what sixteen months to investigate crimes and the Republican led oversight committee and judiciary committee found nothing, um, still like that'll be convenient for him in the moment. But once he's in and it doesn't serve him anymore, like he doesn't have long-standing principles. He has the, he doesn't have any like memory. <laughs> Like, it's just whatever he has to say at any given moment to help him in that moment, and then it's gone. He's like, yep. a, he's like a goldfish. Thank you so much. He is like a goldfish. <laughs> thank you so much for joining support tier, uh, Pacific. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much, uh, a couple members tonight and a few super chats. Um, and I know politics is a very fun conversation. I know. Very fun. Um, but if you enjoyed this, please drop a like, subscribe. And also, channel memberships start at two ninety nine per month. We'll love to have you for future conversations, even if we disagree. Uh, but thank you so much for the membership. She exists in, in just in the present. Can I, can I ask you, the, how much Epstein stuff is there that's still classified or not released? Do you know? And I wonder... Bro, is Trump going to, like, wipe his name from the Epstein stuff and put someone else's name on it if they release it? Like, can they release just, like, a fake... Uh, release a fake Epstein list? <laughs> ask you, the, how much Epstein stuff is there that's still classified or not released? Do you know? And I wonder if there's a way that... He, Biden can just say, hey, here it is, I'm, I'm releasing all of it. Because I remember they asked Trump about this. They said, hey, Trump, so would you release all the stuff about Area 51? He said, absolutely. Would you release all the stuff about just, JFK? Sure. Just Epstein, to piss him off? It's like, and Epstein, he's like, well, you know, a lot of people might get caught up in that. I don't think it's a good idea. So yeah, why not just release all of the Epstein stuff today? It's, it's not going to, nothing matters. Um, like, well, I don't know. I don't know what's in there. The thing, here's the thing. The thing is, if they release the Epstein files, it would it could only hurt the Democrats. Yeah, how, how could <laughs> why? it? Why? Because there's already pictures of Donald Trump with like every fucking sex offender known to mankind and nobody gives a fuck. So if they released a list and it had 99 Republicans on it who were MAGA and one Democrat, that Democrat would be the exclusive headline for the entire story. That would be it. You don't think there's, I mean, I guess there can't be. If there was like a video or something crazy incriminating Trump, an actual like kid f***ing at this point, it would have been released.
Don't they have that recording that just got released from the Daily Beast where they literally came out and and, and had a recording of, of Epstein saying that like Donald Trump was closest his best friend. friend for ten years? Yeah, but, yeah. This is this is a party that brands itself the party of family values and law and order. How, how did it take so long for them to do this? By the way, do you, do you think it's just that the Democrats are fundamentally incompetent at like their job? Like all this stuff just coming out at the last minute, running the worst campaigns, doing the worst shit that, ain't, that nobody cares about. I, I think what Brian said earlier. No, it's because the Democrats are so fucking good at our job. It's that even though the Republicans are these massive fucking anchors that we have to attach it on our boat, we just get better and better at rowing. That's why Obama had, that's why Bill Clinton ran budget surpluses, okay? That's why Obama came in and had to clean up after the fucking 2007, 2008 crisis. It's why Biden had to come in and clean up after the disaster that was COVID, right? And it's why Trump is gonna get to sit back now and receive and enjoy an economy where he gets to benefit from an infrastructure bill that he couldn't pass, where he gets to claim that pre-existing ideas was his idea, okay? With a Republican idea, the thing that he dedicated himself to killing on day one of his administration. He gets to benefit from every single thing the Democrats did. If I was a Republican, I would love the Democrats. If I was the Republicans, I might I might throw the Democrats a bone Here just because they've been helping me so much. That's so aggravating that Trump's going to get the benefit from that, too. It really is. The fact that Trump has failed so badly, but he gets to claim victories based off what Democrats actually did, bro. And these numbers are insane. When you look at just like total jobs added, and you might not be able to see that, but um, there's a chart. It shows essentially for every 60 jobs Democrat uh democratic presidents have added for every 60 jobs democratic presidents have added from uh, 1977 to 2024 republicans have added 15 to 20 jobs like 17 jobs so democrats produce 60 jobs for every 17 republican jobs or they were they produce six jobs for every one republican job um the democrats and the economy it just goes so much better under democrats but republicans talk a better game so people get the perception that republicans are better at the economy um because Republicans sell narratives better because they're shameless. Um, so I don't know if Democrats need to be need to be more shameless, maybe, to sell sell these narratives because we have the information to back it up. But people don't care about the graphs or the information or the wa uh, wage growth or the healthcare. Apparently, they don't care about that. They care they care more about um, they care more about the uh, narratives. Okay, prop up my all of my administrations. I mean, well, I mean, he said it earlier, we had eight years of, of Obama. Where's my socialism and communism? We had four more years of Biden. Where's my socialism and communism? And then we had four years of Trump, and now we have a president that can commit crimes with impunity. Well, what the hell are you going to do about it? I'm going to sit here and make a lot of money complaining about it. <laughs> I, I, I got it. I love how there's like 400 viewers on YouTube Shorts. There's 400 on YouTube Shorts at all times, and then there's around 25 on my regular stream. Um, so yeah, YouTube Shorts is is going crazy lately. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. We have around 500 total viewers. Um, uh, a question for you. Do you think, um, do you think that we'll have a fair election in four years? Is that for me? Yeah. That's, that's the toughest part because you look at Project 2025, there's, there's the Schedule F aspect of it where he can basically, right now we have, I think like a few thousand career civil, uh, a few thousand political appointees and then hundreds of thousands of so like career civil servants that staff the rest of the government. These are, these are prosecutors that work in the DOJ, people who are, are legitimate, are legitimate, you know, career civil servants to the point where even Bill Barr um, had to say that Donald Trump's claims of fraud in 2020 were bullshit because because there was no basis for them and all of the people that he worked with um, were not going to validate those claims. Now imagine all of those people become political appointees and you have no more career civil servants. You have people who are loyal not to the Constitution, not to statute, but rather to Donald Trump himself. And so I, I don't know what happens if in the 2028 uh, election. I don't have any time. I'm just a loser, Epoch. I'm just a loser. I don't have time. It's Friday night. I'm just here having a great time. Someone said they're watching for entertainment. Well, thank you for the free ad revenue. I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, some right-wing militia group says, oh, we, we saw fraud. Uh, the, ad, the ad revenue is actually like 10 cents, by the way. Uh, it's like 10 cents, but it's okay. Not to statute, but rather to Donald Trump himself. And so I, I don't know what happens if in the 2028 uh, election, um, you know, some right-wing militia group says, oh, we, we saw fraud at the uh, in the whatever center it was, the, the Detroit whatever center. Uh, there, these, these votes are not accurate in Detroit. These votes are not accurate in Milwaukee. These votes aren't accurate in Philadelphia. And so all of those have to be, like, thrown out. These voting machines have to be seized in the Democratic population centers in all these states. And Donald Trump's uh, DOJ goes, you know what? We think you're telling the truth, and uh, we're going to validate these claims. There's no backstop to any of this stuff. Then I don't know. I mean, how do you win an election if you're a Democrat? If all of a sudden um, somebody cries fraud, somebody, you know, some Turning Point USA kid cries fraud somewhere in Detroit, and then all of the Detroit votes are at risk. How do you win the state of Michigan without Detroit? How do you win the state of Pennsylvania yeah. without Philly? Yeah, and you're How thinking— do you win Milwaukee without, without Wisconsin? Do you think that's you're, likely well, to happen? Also, you're thinking, you're thinking small time, right? Because they can just go after the state legislatures. If you have a state legislature— that's See, I would combine the chats, but I don't feel like the people in this chat want to be in, involved with YouTube short chats. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit, a little bit vicious in YouTube shorts.
It's on your side or enough people in there. You just flip the electoral vote. That's it. You just have to send in another slate because that's what they're trying to do. We don't even need to find fraud. They can just have the, the state legislature send in a totally different batch of electors and then boom, you're done. The, the, the question you know, also... Like the, the, there's something called the independent state legislature theory. What if, what if, what if this Republican... Let's say they have unified control of government. Let's say, um, let's, say, uh, let's say the Republican Senate kills the filibuster and they pass into law the independent state legislature theory, which says that any election rules have to be passed by the state legislature and they're subject to zero oversight from the governor or any courts. Whatever or state the state legislature yeah. says goes. And then the state legislatures come in and say, okay, well... Uh, you know, one, the, there's no early voting. Everything has to have a paper ballot. We decide who who counts the paper ballots. It's only going to be our people. All of the uh, Jerry, uh, all of the the you know uh, commissions that will ultimately gerrymander the states, they're they're composed of of all Republicans. Like there is so much they could do with unified control of government. So, so look, I, I don't want to like give people, I don't want to make people despair in in terms of hearing this. It's obviously something that we have to keep an eye on. But like there is a lot they could do depending on how far they want to push the envelope. Well, the question is, how likely do you think this is based on uh, the previous tenure that Trump's had in the White House and what he said so far? Do you think this is something? that is going to happen absolutely or do you think this is like a lot of democrats just uh freaking out and it won't actually this is the big question they're going to talk about right here is how much of the stuff trump actually tries with going out uh going after the enemy within or whatever drop a like on the stream by the way drop a like drop a like on the stream thank you and subscribe uh but with enemy within trump toned down that rhetoric and he actually is separating from rfk a little bit so there's a chance that all these capitalist owners of trump all these investors and whatever peter Thiel and whatever um, there's a chance they only said all this crazy stuff to get elected, but they're still going to do some of it. We just don't know how much they're going to try to do and how much they're going to be able to legally do and who's going to listen to them. If Trump tells the military to do something unlawful, they're not going to listen to something that's not lawful. Um, poor rural people are going to be cooked under Trump. Yeah, the biggest uh, wage growth under Biden's admin, this is actually the biggest wage growth for the working class in any presidential term. Uh like the the uh, working class and middle class grew more than the top one percent did in total wealth for the first time like ever uh under biden which is actually kind of wild um for a couple years for a couple years there because biden's policies were really uh demand side oriented uh supporting workers and supporting manufacturing and and uh supporting uh building infrastructure and that really helps uh that really helps workers get higher wages and biden supports unions too so we get to this point and he's not actually Trump hates unions. All right, let's talk about, uh, let's listen to them talk about what Trump's going to do in office. Is he going to go after the enemy within? Absolutely. Or do you think this is like a lot of Democrats just uh, freaking out and it won't actually get to this point and he's not actually going to go and replace everyone with loyalists or, or what? So should we actually be panicking or like, well, if you had to put odds on this, but how much are you betting, right? We're on uh, predicted. No, we're on poly market right now. What are the odds? I have to be out of, out of country if I want to bet on poly market. But uh, um, <laughs> look, I would say... I don't know. I mean, it's, it's in between the two that you said. You said, is it guaranteed or is it just Democrats panicking? I think it's somewhere in between. We're talking about a guy who tried to get his vice president to unilaterally anoint him the winner of the election that he lost. This is a guy who called into states to get them to, like, seize the voting machine. So I put it past Donald Trump to try and rig the election in all. his party's favor. This guy stops at nothing. So, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Right now, maybe maybe give him some benefit, benefit of the doubt that he definitely doesn't deserve and say, like, 65 <laughs> percent. You know, so I guess the, the, what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to distract him with other stuff so he forgets about appointing all these people over the next four years. Well, that's one thing. I think that we can rely on him to continue to be incompetent, to continue to be absent minded and to be distracted. But the problem is he's controlled by people that that's aren't. What well, so I, just to be clear, the biggest the biggest fear was before and people don't realize this, but as much as like people shit on bureaucrats, the only thing that stopped Trump last time were a lot of bureaucratic people. Yep. It was people who were working in the office of the vice presidency, giving counsel to Mike Pence. It was surprisingly enough it was people like William Barr it was the assistant AGs in the Department of Justice who were willing to stand up and say they resigned if Trump did crazy shit but if we if we schedule F and now Trump has the ability to dig into these these uh these offices and these departments and say hey I don't like that associate AG I'm gonna fire that guy something he shouldn't be able to do but maybe not could like that's yeah, that, that's the issue, is that the thing standing before him, Actually, let, let, between this, him and what he wanted before, those things might be gone this now. This is a really yeah. interesting question. Let's take it back to the 2020 election. Let's say that he already did have loyalists installed in Georgia, which was basically— Trump would still be president, or we would be in a civil you, war. Yeah, what, what, what do you think actually uh, would have actually happened? Let's say— What are you guys What are you guys saying? 17 million Dem voters poof? So you're saying the Dems forgot to rig the election this time, but somehow Trump won, and Democrats still perform well in state house, level, in state house races, like in Pennsylvania? Like the, Dem the Democrats won the state house in Pennsylvania. So like, what, what do you mean? Did Democrats forget to rig it? Oh no. They forgot this time. No. That's the issue is that the thing standing before him, Actually, look, look, between him and what he wanted before, those things might be gone now. I guess, uh, I guess when the vote count was lower in 2012 than it was in 2008, that was also Democrats not rigging it. You know what I mean? Cause there's no like regular explanations for these things because you think it's a conspiracy. All you know are conspiracies. There can never be a normal reason for something happening. You need it to be a conspiracy theory for you to believe it. It's wild, bro. 
a really interesting question. Let's take it back to the 2020 election. Let's say that he already did have loyalists installed in Georgia, which was basically- Trump would still be president or we would be in a civil you, war. Yeah, what, what, what do you think actually uh, would have actually happened? Let's say that they said, you know what? These, we're not certifying these. These people, they were fake. We're sending these ones. Go ahead and sign it, Mike Pence. Would Mike Pence, and I guess let's say Mike Pence signed it. Where would we really be today with just that one event if the people in Georgia were loyal to him? What, what's your honest take of what would have happened? I mean, he, he, we won enough states that Georgia would Okay, well, well Georgia plus states. another, or, you know, two Georgia, or three. Like, if you're saying, like, if he had enough states to actually flip it. So yeah. That, yeah, like Georgia, Pennsylvania. Let's, like, let's say that Pence was Vance, and Pence was like, I'm not going to count, or he just counts the other slits of electors, and then Trump is gabbled in as the winner, sure. right? Yeah, 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 basically that. So the path is, it goes to the Supreme Court, and Eastman said they probably wouldn't hear it, because it was a political question. So they would invoke the political yeah. question doctrine, and say it's too hot for us to handle, and then everybody would sit around with their thumbs up their asses and go, oh, well, gosh, I guess. Or sorry, you tell me what you think will happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's real. Thing. And remember, you're talking about the same party where Gore conceded, okay, on December 3rd, 12th, or whatever. So. Yeah, wait, give, give a real answer to this. Like, imagine that Vice Pen, uh, that Pence said, yeah, I'm, I'm signing the fake electors. Donald Trump is the new president. What happens next? Yeah, I, I still think that... Well, that's not exactly true, because at the campus, um, there were campuses in Pennsylvania that had five-hour lines. So, I mean, sure, a lot of young people don't vote, but there wasn't a huge issue with that. The vote count in Pennsylvania was actually... Pretty much the same. I think the, I think there are more total votes in PA versus 2020, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, certain uh, a lot of campuses had three hour lines, four hour lines, five hour lines. Uh, there was there was higher turnout on some campuses. That can be different state by state. Um, but just in general, a lot of people just didn't vote. Like they weren't motivated enough. They didn't believe things were going to change or whatever. COVID was really motivating because COVID was like rock bottom, and they wanted to get Trump out of there because Trump was crazy. And now everyone kind of forgot, I guess. It probably fails because the ECA just proves that, that Pence's role was, was ceremonial, was just perfunctory. But, but, um, and, and that's since been clarified to make it even more clear that that role is perfunctory. But, but um, so, so I think in that case, it probably does fail. And, and we did see that. You know, look, they, they won zero court cases related to these fake electors, and they would go on to actually prosecute a number of these fake electors. So clearly, that, that wouldn't have held up in court. And I don't think that the Supreme Court, I mean, we, we did see, to your exact point, Eastman bring up this claim uh, when he was. Uh, investigated by the January 6th committee and he did say that they likely wouldn't wouldn't have even heard it and, mm -hmm. and I don't think that they would have but if they wouldn't have heard it then you're fucked, right because then well, are they going to issue what do you the problem is that like on on some procedural law right where you can issue a stay or whatever you're like you're sitting around waiting for somebody to make a payment or you're sitting around like waiting for whatever but if it's like January 10th 11th January 18th and people are legitimately looking around it's like okay, well, we haven't counted the electoral votes or we haven't we're disagreeing still on these and now it's like January 20th approaching like I, I think that the scary thing is people don't people don't know what would have happened right like would you just go through the ceremony without the votes having been counted like, like somebody besides Pence would have counted them. Like there's no, I don't think there's a provision in the ECA for that to happen. Like it would just be, I think the issue is they just wanted to kick the can down the road until basically people were like, it's fucking too complicated now. Just he's in a second term, I think is the, is the worry. Yeah. For sure delay. For sure they were just seeking delay. Yep. Donald Trump even said himself, like we heard his quote, just leave it up to, just leave it up to, you know, just, just, Leave it up to us, and, and and me and Republican congressmen will take care of it. That was literally the guy's quote. Yeah, call it, call the, just call the election corrupt and leave the rest up to me and the Republican. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Uh, so so I think he was banking on delay, and and that did really redound to his benefit for. A, I mean, it, the best that it could have done, actually. Like he he got pretty damn close. Um, in in with that delay, in kind of the the avalanche of disinformation that was put forward by by Fox News, by all these right wing anchors. I mean, Fox had to tack right to, to keep to stay on par with like with OAN, which was eating into their share. So they had everybody using this delay, using that vacuum to just fill with more disinformation. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's impossible for me to say what would actually I want to ask one last question. And I'll let these, these guys go to you. I, I posed it to them. and They didn't really have an answer. So Biden has three months left. Would you have him do anything specifically at this time? Or would you yeah, just have him sit there with a sum up his ass? demand that Sonia Sotomayor step down tomorrow Ooh. so that he can replace her because I don't know maybe we should learn one single lesson from the past and not keep watching our Supreme Court justices die in office while the Republican counterparts get replaced by like true please do that please please they're not going to do it because they don't I don't know please do that I don't want the Supreme Court to be like 1-8 I don't want the Supreme Court to be 9-0, bro. A 9-0 Supreme Court would be kind of crazy. 38-year-olds. So we had this conversation yesterday. Me, Peace, go in. Do you know a guy online, uh, Josiah, or Pondering Politics? I've, I've, I've heard of Pondering Politics. You just heard of him? An amazing I've... political YouTuber, but okay, I'll let that slide. Okay. Um, no, no, I'm just kidding. He's a friend. He's a really, really good uh, political YouTuber. Um, but the, uh, so me, him, and Pisco were having a conversation about um, the Supreme Court thing. And I think me and Josiah, um, who love and cherish the Supreme Court, unlike Pisco here, who is a Supreme Court hater, we immediately were like, um, Sotomayor and Pagan should just step down. We need new justices. But then the immediate um, fear was, would you have the chance, because you only need one senator, one Democratic senator, to go, well, I don't know if we should put in a new Supreme Court justice when the American people have already spoken. It only takes one, and now you've just given up. Can, they, resi can they rescind their resignation, or does it only happen? <laughs> they can rescind it. Oh, yeah, so that's a problem. Can, can you actually? You can, they can make a contingent on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah there um, you go. It's a good call because, like, who, who, who do we have right now? Who are the maybes? Cinema and Mansion. Yeah. Well, I think Mansion's a no. With, with anything, like, 
There was. I actually don't. I think she would be more likely to to like give it a hard no than uh, than than to do it. So at this point, I, I don't know. I mean, like, what could what could Trump? I, I'm hoping people a lot smarter than me are going through and figuring out ways to entrench. I mean, not that it's going to matter. Like to entrench a lot of the policies that they've passed thus far, or to make it harder for Donald Trump to to, to do what he's going to do in office with, as far as it relates to like climate stuff or healthcare stuff or, or whatever it is. But but. The thing is, if the government is staffed by like the Jeffrey Clarks of the world and the John Eastmans of the world, is that going to matter? And then mm -hmm. what, they'll appeal it to the Supreme Court? And forget, yeah. Like Forget the who's staffing the government. You also, we don't really even truly know like what grounds we're standing on with this court, right? Where you could snap your fucking fingers and tomorrow Roe and Casey are gone. And then the next day, uh, Chevron is gone. And then the next, like, who knows what major doctrines are about to be flipped by this court because there is no respect for any prior decision. So who, who knows like what power the, the executive office could have or who knows? But yeah, that's, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's a very shaky ground, I think, judicially. Yeah, I mean, there's like, there's almost no point in trying to like shore up stuff right now because yeah. like, that that would that would that would suggest that that Republicans would respect anything. <laughs> yeah, true. I, I was just arguing with this. There are there are things that can be done that can't be undone. Like the, uh, someone brought up in chat, there was restrictions we currently have on the munitions that we gave to Ukraine. We could just lift them. You could say there's no more restrictions on your long range missiles you have there. We can do that, and then that can't be undone, right? Once that's done. I do think that yeah. I think we have like six billion dollars in aid that Biden Biden announced like today that he's trying to push through. So we have. Um, I think Elizabeth Warren talked about um, getting every judge appointed that we can before the end of Biden's presidency. Like, there's a thing about Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Warren sounding the alarm, making sure that judges are picked. Um, and these are non-reversible judges if, if these appointments are made. Um, so the Biden administration can get on that as well. Um, I think it's something they can focus on. Uh, because Republicans appoint judges like crazy. They don't waste any time. I don't know why there's so many vacancies that are not appointed, but hopefully we get to that. Have, like the clock has started now, and I think the final six billion dollars in aid is is on its way to Ukraine. So like that is one example. I don't know, buy an entire fleet of whatever government vehicles there are, put in the order now, and pay for it for EVs so that we don't have gas powered vehicles. Like I don't know, I don't really know what what much you can do, but but hopefully there's some like hopefully there's some infrastructure we can put in place um, or or payments we can make that like that will at least entrench some clean energy stuff that can that can help Ukraine while we still have the chance. But uh, yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think there there are things that we can do that can't just be undone with executive action. Like if you if you drop a chandelier on the floor. It's broken. There's nothing that you can do. If you pardon someone, they're pardoned. You can't put them back in jail. Oh, bro. Your name is Daddy Trump. Why is everyone calling Trump Daddy? On Fox News, they call him Daddy. Tucker Carlson calls him Daddy. It's full cult. It's like a weird cult, too. It's not even like a cool cult. It's so weird. You're, get, you're getting banned. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing Daddy Trump on my feed, bro. You can go to bed. There are things that Biden can do today. The question is, what of those are impactful enough that he should be focusing on in the next three months to really... Oh, yeah, the people begging and like, oh, uh, on Fox News, they were talking about making the mass deportation a reality TV show so we can watch how they rip them out of our country. And it's like, bro, you realize that if you deport 20 million people, like 19.5 million of those people are just like having a life in America with kids and working like 60 hours a week. Like they're just having a normal life in America. Like, you're not going to be, you know, it's not going to be busting gangs, bro. Like, and they're taking happiness. You know, they're, they're happy about it. Like, oh, we get to watch. That'd be so awesome if we, if we got to watch. Like, it's, it, it really is dehumanizing people. And, and I, I made this, this joke a few years ago that's coming true. I think Republicans would be okay with having, like, a tournament just watching poor people fight each other to the death like i feel like that's where we're heading that's like where we're heading if like the trump brand of politics at least uh we're gonna have like gladiator gladiator matches again or something against like ai bots or whatever stifle as much of kind of whatever policies are of trump are going to be the most damaging coming up uh, over the next four years what can he do very quickly to break a chandelier that trump can't just unclick it's broken i, I think our time is much yeah, it's their version of comedy and satire, but the issue is they mean it. <laughs> that's the that's the biggest problem. Is all their comedy and satire is really like it's offensive humor, but they also mean it. You know, they also vote that way too. What can he do very quickly to break a chandelier that Trump can't just unclick? It's broken. I, I think our time is much better spent. I mean, I'm just gonna be frank at this point. Biden failed us, or we failed Biden, but we need to focus on what we can do to improve ourselves. And that's why I think, you know, I respect this conversation. I love it. And I, I really, no one hates what happened on January 6th more than me. No one is more critical. Really? Of Nobody hates it more than you? I, 
I've talked about it. This is like my raison d'etre. It's like my organizing principle. The thing I talk about. The, the number most. one hater of January 6th. Yeah, I mean, okay. the interaction. I, I'm over. I'm in the weeds arguing with no namers on Discord about. To be fair, I'm like the J6 guy. I didn't care about J6 until Pisco argued it with me. True. I mean, <laughs> like, like our, we had like a 12-hour argument where Pisco was like, "Don't you think Donald Trump was in a derelict of duty?" And I was like, "I don't know. What was he supposed to do?" We are, we you, literally argued about this today. Yeah, yes, I didn't even. Yeah, 100%. I didn't even care. So. And, and I, I I respect that conversation. The conversation, and we should use January 6th tactically, but. I see even this conversation. We're yeah, getting, nobody cares we're, about we're it, getting yeah. stuck in our ways. Mm -hmm. We just spent 25 minutes kind of theory crafting about other Jan 6 alternatives, right? And we're not focused on what oh, we can okay, do to so change ourselves. I agree. And that should be what we should be doing. So here's my, okay, so here's just my one thing, and then I'll get your take on it. Just go, go. Okay, this is, it's sociopathic, I admit. Okay, just get that out there, okay? Yeah. I wish that it was easier to tie. Um, to tie accountability to the decisions that people make like it again I know it's not sociopathic, but like it hurts to see Republicans voting against things like FEMA aid and then being the largest recipients of it It hurts to see people uh, Republicans and, and alternative conservative media undermine things like FEMA and then when a disaster happens and one hour later, Biden is on the phone with every single Republican governor. You know, what do you need? Tell me what you need. I'll come down. I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll send whatever. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is, you know, saying to, to California, F them. they don't need help for the wildfires. You know what? And Trump lied, saying that Biden couldn't come, couldn't contact the governors after the governors just said how good Biden was being, dude. I can't believe Trump got away with that lie, too. Trump really just lied his ass off for like 10 years straight and no one cared, bro. Trump literally led an insurrection <laughs> trying to overturn it. <laughs> overturn a presidential election no one cared what they didn't fucking approve my plans in order to cut these guys right it's They're not even like and i see people posting even like liberals saying like wow you traded your daughter's freedoms for gas prices and i'm like bro don't post this like they just traded your freedoms or they like traded to hurt people like they they, they just wanted to do that it's not for gas prices maybe they think it is i don't know that's bad either way but Trump also has the worst economic plans of any presidential candidate in American history. So they have no reason to believe he's going to lower gas prices. Actually, you could tell me any president in American history. I could tell you they're not going to affect gas, gas prices that much. That's probably one of the areas a president has the least effect to. Um, and, and Trump's plan to lower costs in general it, it was just him saying he's going to do it. He just says, I'm going to lower costs. And people are like, all right, he has a plan. He said it. He's going to lower costs. I like that plan. It's like, bro, don't even post that meme. They didn't trade it for gas prices. They just did it, bro. They just did it. Just own it. Just own it. Drop a like on the stream. There has to be some way. How many, how much do we hear about how horrible the federal spending is? How many Republicans turned down the COVID stimulus to shore up all their state budgets from the American Rescue Plan, right? There has to be a way to tie consequences. Yeah, you get on the board the... and you say, dear glorious leader uh, Joseph Biden today, and you talk it up like Charlie Kirk does. You talk it up. You have some kind of infrastructure to get the message out because That's holy it is it is it's an infrastructure problem like you, you have to remember they, i feel like and i've said this for so long republicans have like a morning meeting where they all decide what they're going to talk about and they're so coordinated yep. in their messaging and they do it across every platform and they own every platform and they do it in people's am radios they do it in the podcast that they run run roughshod of meanwhile liberals are fighting over like what form of universal health care they like and if they like uh neo pronouns or if they like uh what gender theory they like fighting over like how progressive they need to be and republicans are just in the morning like all right guys are we gonna lie yes what are we gonna lie about okay cool and they go and lie about it like it's that simple for them and that's and again that's that's what happens when you have a lot of people in a party with principles like we have we all have principles so we want to like represent those principles in our politics and they don't have principles so it's easier for them it's easy for them to coordinate messaging because they don't have any like they don't have any standards they could just lie and, and say the same thing as the other republican pundits so it is harder on the left but we need a coordinated message we need to understand that it's necessary for the survival of democracy in general over Democrats on, they own YouTube, they own Rumble, they own Discord, like every single platform. They are coordinated in their messaging and they repeat this stuff over and over until it's seared into everybody's cerebral cortexes. How many times did we see the trans, the, the, trans, the, the trans, transgender inmate surgery commercial on TV oh, during yeah. this election cycle? They poured like $500 million into that commercial so that everybody would see it. That, that is their strategy. They repeat this stuff over and over again. There's a reason that Donald Trump's build the wall, make America great again, lock her up. Like all of this stuff is just the, the, the product, the brainchild of, of, the product of repetition. And they do it really well. And that's why all this stuff sticks and like we have so much the democrat al franken has a joke where he said the democrats bumper sticker would end c next bumper sticker because <laughs> we have so much that we throw at people and we don't True. Have to settle on one message true yeah well
What do you got? Media Empire. Find a way. You guys. I mean, the Young Turks, uh, Brian, yeah, that's... Destiny. But you guys oh, need to God. Find... Wish me luck. Tomorrow I go on Piers Morgan. You guys oh, need to man. find common cause because right now, our leaders are not doing the job they need to be. The Democratic leaders in charge right now are failing at their job. You need to break bread with whoever it is that you're beefing with or whatever's going on and find a way to win because losing sucks and we're losing bad in terms of the, the info wars. I think that you guys are young, dynamic. Um, people like you should gather together and we should start fighting on their ground, on their turf, and, and make some inroads. And we should call it like Info Wars. I like that. <laughs> Someone should make Just a buy bit. the brand. Wait, I, I, isn't it for sale now? It is, I think it's for sale. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I honestly think that they're soul searching. And I think that it starts, like you guys said, um, with making sure our, our message is getting across and, and making sure that we're not constantly on fucking defense because that sucks all the time to be having to like be brushing aside their narratives and you know debunking what they said about cats and dogs and haitians and puerto ricans or whatever right it, that, that yeah but we're never going to win being the honorable party that's what you guys don't get okay half the population is fucking stupid okay it's just it's just fucking true okay like you're not going to win being like no guys that's not true here's let me explain you're you not going to win can't insulting be a, i'm, I'm just being realistic no. i'll talk about the trump plans i'll talk about the trump plans then um thank you for the two dollars jacob thoughts on your poll Who's the better candidate, Ronald Reagan versus Donald Trump? Um, I uh, I don't even know. I, I would say Ronald Reagan's the more honorable candidate, but at this point, Reagan was... I don't think Reagan was able... I, I guess, no, Reagan did have the biggest victory in American history, didn't he? Or at least in the past 50 years um, with the Electoral College as, as a candidate. So I'd have to say Reagan's probably the better overall. Um, and Reagan had some control over his mental facilities. Um, but yeah, uh, probably, I'd, I'd probably say Reagan would be the better overall candidate. Like, you're not going to win being like, no, guys, that's not true. Here's something. You're not going to win insulting. A, I'm, I'm just being realistic. No, about that's it. not true. They no, that is true. No, 100% Reagan. Yeah, Reagan was anti-authoritarian, at least. T Trump is teaming up with authoritarians. And you're saying, open your eyes. You're going to be, your eyes are going to open, buddy. I, I'll tell you what. Thank you guys for, for uh, thank you for becoming members. Uh, two ninety nine per month for a membership, really supporting uh, the channel. Really appreciate that and all the super chats um, and all the likes and subscribes, subscriptions tonight. I know many of you just subscribe so you can comment and yell at me, but that's okay. Thank you. They want insulting us. Yes. You can make sure you make sure you unsubscribe after though. Is fucking stupid. Okay. It's just it's just fucking. What they said about cats and dogs and Haitians and Puerto Ricans or whatever, right? It, that, that yeah, but we're never going to win being the honorable party. That's what you guys don't get, okay? Half the population is fucking stupid, okay? It's just, it's just fucking true, okay? Like, you're not going to win being like, no, guys, that's not true. Here's something. You're you can't, not going to win insulting. A, 50 I'm, I'm just being realistic. No, that's not true because they want insulting us. Yes, you, you <laughs> have to literally not play their game. You, you, they're dogs eating cats. Yeah, well, Republicans are eating fucking squirrels. No, no, it's, it's, like, it's, you, I, I, I just, I qualify that a little bit. It's not because the, the people aren't stupid. It's that the media apparatus on the conservative side, like he said, it, it like Ryan said, it yeah. is locked up. Bro, I would see one talking point uh, about like a, like the, like the, the squirrel, yeah, the squirrel thing or the Kamala coup thing. Like I would see it in one place and in like 30 minutes. I don't know if they get like an orders beamed in from it's Starlink. Yeah, Star every Rogan. single person yeah. is all of a sudden, there's like some hippie in the forest who voted for Trump who like has this messaging dropped to him by fucking carrier pigeon who's like, oh shit. Oh, Kamala did do a coup and it's undemocratic. Gotcha. There's the marching orders. Like it's, it's insane. But the people, because we drag these people onto, you know, Twitter space and we talk to them, like they're not dumb. They know all the talking points. They can give you Brandon B, the video of Haitians walking around with geese from Parks in Ohio is not from Springfield, Ohio. Um, it's from a different place. And that person was working with, I think it was like um, the local cleanup or like animal control. Um, and they were moving someone that got, they were moving a, 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 a goose that got hit by a car. They're moving geese that got hit by a car. You believed this info. That picture you saw of the black person walking with the geese. He was working with whatever the agency is there to clean off the road, to just clear the road of roadkill. Like that was his job. He was not a Haitian in Springfield, Ohio, eating animals or whatever. That was a lie. You saw propaganda. And this is the issue. This is the problem. All the data is just wrong because they're media apparatus. They're getting the wrong so, information. They're getting yeah. the wrong narratives. And we need to both be on their shit. Free education camps. No, no, no. no. Go, go on to Piers. You do a fucking yeah. great job. Medi does a great job on Piers. Brian does a great job on Piers. Go on their places. You're talking about cannibalism in Haiti. You realize that I don't even, I don't even care. You're, you're, you're hopeless. You're, you're hopeless. You're hopeless. It's not worth my mental health. That's our new rule, guys. There are certain levels of conspiracy that you just don't talk to. All right. Some people are so far gone, you just don't talk to them. There's no reason to. They're not going to change their mind. They're not going to change their mind. There's no reason to waste your mental energy. Just move on. And make your own spaces as well to compete with them. I yeah. think it needs to be yeah. an all-on-hands effort. Just like, 
that, that's a great point. And and I have, you know, I, I was of the don't go on Fox News, you can't validate Fox News as a platform a few years ago. And then I realized, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to, like, cede this ground to the right where, let's face it, people are watching anyway? The fact that you don't go on doesn't make it any more, it doesn't make it any less real that millions of people are consuming Fox News or any of these other platforms on a daily basis. So you can either, you can either, you know, have your high ground and cede that ground to them completely, or you can go and make a case to those people. And even if you pick off two people, that's okay. That's two more people that, that would have heard your argument than, uh, yeah. than, than would have if you opted not to go. Like Pete Buttigieg has been doing, yeah? Yeah. 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 And you do it well, Brian does it well, and Maddie does it well. And, Ch and Jane does it well. F*** it. Cool. Let's do it. Why did so many people in Springfield claim that Haitians were disrespecting their community and harming the... Because they are racist, then they said racist lies about them. They lied. They just lied. They lied. It was not true. The people there admitted it was not true. A girl lost her cat, and she called the police instead a Haitian immigrant ate her cat, and then she found her cat in the basement. You can Google this story. They apologized. The people there apologized because they didn't want to bring so much hate to their community members, these Haitian immigrants who are here illegally.